How y'all doing today? I see y'all starting to log on. I'm gonna give y'all a chance to log on in the group. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I'm your host. And today's topic is, are you running him away, sis? Are you working that man nerves, sis? Are you complaining, sis? Do you know how to communicate effectively, sis? Seriously, though, men hate emotional turmoil. If you notice that you have a spouse that they come home like right before it's time to get ready to go to bed or they coming home and as soon as they get there, they leaving back out again. And I even have women that send me messages. Actually, yesterday, I had a total of three people that sent me a message. And the, the main thing they all had in common was their husbands don't want to be around them. So when I say, why don't your husband want to be around you? I don't know. And it's like, you come to me, right? And you expect me to be able to give you wise counsel. But when you come to me looking for wise counsel, you don't want to be transparent. You don't want to tell the truth because you feel like somewhere along the lines, the truth is going to make you look bad. Okay. But in order for this thing to work, you have to be truthful. Because the one thing that I always tell people and I tell Spencer and I tell everybody, people can't argue by themselves. Like in order for an argument to happen, it requires two people. You can't argue by yourself. In order for an argument to happen, it requires two people to have dialogue. Okay. Somebody has to be wise enough to understand the importance of humbling themselves. Just because you humble yourself does not mean that you are a pushover. Just because you choose to humble yourself does not mean that you're letting somebody run over you. Just because you choose to humble yourself does not make you any less of a woman. Sometimes somebody got to be wise enough to say, you know what? We'll revisit this later. We'll revisit it. I have learned over the years of me growing as a woman that sometimes it's better to revisit a situation. I was on my Instagram and the young lady said, it just seemed like everything she teaching us is all about the man, all about the man. What about the woman? We supposed to have all of this stuff going on and we can't address what we got to say. I never said that you couldn't address it. I said that you need to be wise with your words. I said you can address an issue, but your words shouldn't tear down a person. I said that if you're going to address your husband, you're going to talk to your husband. It needs to be with a certain level of respect. That's what I said. I didn't say that you can't address your grievances. I never said that. But if you want peace in your home, you got to bring peace to the situation. Meaning if I got an issue, I can't come trying to address the issue talking about, let me tell you about yourself. When I come trying to address the issue, I say, look, I need to talk to you about something. That's, that's weighing heavily on my heart. That sounds a whole lot different than me saying, let me tell you about yourself. Men are looking for a feminine asset. Y'all keep wondering, what do you mean by feminine? Book, book, book the wife school. Book it. I had three different women that sent me three different messages about three different situations. And the end result was their husbands have completely left the home. Do I feel like these husbands want to leave their household? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. But I do believe that there's peace somewhere else. And they go and trying to find it. Because it ain't at their house. All right. 
Proverbs 25 and 24. Better to live on a corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. This biblical right here. The Bible tell you it's better to go find you somewhere else to be rather than to be in a house with a woman who want to fight, who want to argue, who you can't get along with. A lot of problems that we have is we lack conflict resolution skills. We don't know how to have an issue, address the issue, and let that be that. We want to have the issue, address the issue, and then talk about what you did a year ago. We want to have an issue, address that issue and everything else that we didn't let pile up instead of nipping certain things in the bud a long time ago. That is not how you address issues. The right way to address the issue is understand what your issue is and address that. But a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't address exactly what the issue is and do it in love and then come with a solution and move on with the rest of their day. Grown people have not mastered that. A lot of grown people have not mastered that. And then I'm always getting people to say, well, Sharonda, I'm coming to you because I want to tell on him and I want you to tell me what to do to fix him because I don't have a problem because he needs to be fixed, not me. If you ever come to me about an issue in your problem, I'm going to always tell you what to do to fix you. I ain't never telling you about what to do to fix your husband. I will never tell you what to do to fix your husband. Because if you wise, by now you understand that you can't fix him. The only thing you have control over is yourself. How you handle situations. How you respond to situations. That's what you have control over. If we could fix husbands. If we had the power and the authority to fix a husband, we would have fixed their asses a long time ago. But this is how you fix a husband. You create the change in you. I'm telling you what I know. When you become a more positive person and more positive things start coming out of your mouth, then your whole household becomes positive. If we had the power to fix husbands, we would have fixed them a long time ago. So what we do is we do the work within ourselves. We make certain changes within ourselves about how we're going to respond to situations. And then what happens is we watch the change happen within our husbands. Because what happens is when you have an issue and you say, sweetheart, I need to talk to you. I have something that's, that's laying real heavy on my heart right now. And let me talk to you. And you say, look, baby, this is my issue. This, 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 and this. What can we do? What, what solutions can we come up with? How can we fix these things that I have an issue with? And then your husband says that these are the solutions. Bam, 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 and bam. And you say, no, what, th baby, thank you. Thank you for taking this time and talking to me so we can resolve this. I love you. Is there anything you need me to do for you today? Okay, all right, thank you. And you're done with it. That ain't how we, that ain't how we do. That ain't how we do. I know that ain't how we do because I have not always done it like that. Oh, one thing about it. I was Claudette's daughter. And I was going to take it there because I ain't about to feel played. And like Carter say, it's up and it's stuck. That was me a long time ago. That was me. It was up and it was stuck. But the people that know me today, they know I'll go get a fucking hotel room before I argue with you. And that's the truth. What you mean? Just what I said, I will completely separate myself from the situation before I argue with you. Either we're going to come to a resolution with a solution for the issue and talk like adults 
or we just won't talk at all. I completely separate myself from your house. A lot of y'all didn't catch that. That's Spencer house. I keep telling y'all that. That's your husband's house. He, he the man that he's the king. But what y'all want to do? Oh, no. I'm putting him out. Now he in the streets. And you don't know where he at. See, when you decide to make the decision to separate yourself, you know where you're going. You know what you're doing. You know you're just going to cool your head off. But when you send him out in the streets, you don't, you, you, you just lost control of that whole situation. But that's going to go over a lot of y'all head. I'm just letting you know, ladies, that we have been fed a lie. That we can say whatever we genuinely think in our marriage. And if we are unhappy about something, then it's up and it's stuck. Men lose affection for you like that. Meaning that people say, what you mean when you say men lose affection for you? That means that they don't crave to be around you. They don't crave to have you in their presence. They don't crave and desire you. You become more of a nuisance to them than peace to them. And you want to be his peace. Ladies say, oh, Sharon, you always talking about, about the man, about the man. Yes, I do. Because at the end of the day, what you got to understand is y'all are a team. And if you are in this group, my job is to deal with you as the wife. God ain't never called me to do no husband school. He ain't told me nothing about no husband school. He ain't told me nothing about talking to no husbands. He straight up told me to deal with the wives. So when I start dealing with the wives, the first thing y'all want to say is, but the husbands. He ain't told me to do that. He told me to deal with the wives. And when the wives bring the change into the household, the husbands is going to change. And I know this to be true because I didn't live it. I know what it means to come and bring a whole nother type of demeanor to the household. A whole nother type of attitude to the household. Because if I got a positive attitude, then positivity got to rest there. But if he negative, I'm negative, this whole household about to be negative. But when he look at you and he see that you ain't on that bullshit, men naturally, they naturally don't want to deal with bullshit. So they're not going to be on no bullshit either. It, men and women, we behave completely different. Completely different. I've seen men like let shit roll off their back and be like, shit, nobody worry about that shit. And I've seen women that will hammer that shit and hammer that shit and they ain't letting it go and they ain't letting it die and they're going to keep bringing it back up. We operate differently. So if you come into the household with peace, he going to be happy about it. And one thing he ain't trying to do is bring confusion if you bring in peace. He going to eat that shit up. He going to be like, oh, shit, she ain't upset. All right. And it ain't that you ain't upset. It's just that you know how to extend grace and you know how to have conflict resolution skills. Next, moving on. Because I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. But I want to talk about submitting and serving. And, there, and I want you to understand that there is nothing demeaning about submitting and serving your husband. For a long time, I never saw women submit and serve because I never really saw a lot of married women. But God graced me to run into older women that were married. And my pastor was one of my first teachers. And I, I, I paid attention to even though she was the person that was up on the microphone giving the um giving the sermons or whatever the teachings at our church she still knew how to submit to her husband she still knew how to let her husband be the leader and i i, I observed her the way she moved in her household because i was graced to be able to be welcomed into her home and to see how she operated in her household. So I was able to see her in ministry 
And I was able to see her in her private life. And it was beautiful to watch her submit and serve her husband was something beautiful to see. And a lot of women, when I talk about submitting and serving, they look at it as something derogatory and demeaning. When it's not, it's actually something very beautiful to be able to serve somebody else. See, the one thing that you're going to understand about being a wife is wives are selfless and we are constantly giving. That's all a part of us being wives. So the thing is, if you being a wife and the only thing you could talk about is what's somebody doing for you and I, I need him to match my energy and I give what I get and all of this other stuff, you're not going to do well. You're not going to do well. You're going to always be upset. You're going to always be pointing the finger. You're going to always be keeping tabs about what he doing versus what you doing. You're not going to be happy in marriage. You're just not because you don't have the, the, the right understanding. Another example of serving. God graced me to, to have my husband's great aunt to really be, her and her husband, to really be a mentor to us. And I can't remember exactly what was going on, y'all. But I remember, I don't know if it was at a repast or a family function or whatever, but this is the lesson that I was taught. Um, I had washed my hands and I was getting ready to fix food for everybody. I was, you know, it was a bunch of women and we were like washing our hands and we were getting ready to fix food. And Auntie Vanilla told all of us ladies, before y'all feed any of these people, I need y'all to serve your husbands first. I need y'all to feed your husbands and get your husbands taken care of and get them situated before you fix a plate of food for anybody else. Take care of your husband. That stuck with me. That this woman understood certain principles that she was sharing with us younger wives. That even if we were at a function or we were there to work and do whatever we was there to do to serve other people, before you do anything for anybody else, you're going to take care of your husband first. You're going to serve him first. You're going to make sure that he's situated first before you start dealing with the public. That had never been taught to me. But I took that and I ran with it and I understood the importance of making sure that my husband was situated first before I make sure that anybody else and their husbands were situated. And the thing is, we don't have elders teaching us those type of principles anymore. We don't have that anymore. I wish that I had a Sharonda Parker when I was a very young wife. I wish that I had these type of teachings because I wouldn't have had to buy so many cents. So I'm trying to be to a lot of these younger wives what these older women were to me. I'm trying to teach you the beauty in submitting and serving your husband and sucking his dick. If you can suck his dick, you can submit and you can serve. If you can humble yourself enough to get on your knees to put a dick in your mouth, you can submit and serve. You can. So when y'all get to telling me about how, oh no, I ain't, I can't submit, I can't serve. I saw my mama do it and he treated her like this and I saw this here and he did this here. Baby, you can miss me with all that went, all that went way over my head. I, ain't, I don't want to hear none of that because see your mama understood certain principles that you have yet to learn. And when y'all get to telling me about how your mama got cheated on over and over and over and over again, I'm not saying that they don't have men in the street that ain't whores. But what I'm saying is a lot of men that cheat, they cheating because certain things are not being handled in the household. So if you had a generation of your grandmother got cheated on and your mama got cheated on and now it's your generation and you getting cheated on, Somewhere along the lines, you got to say, why all these men keep cheating on us? What we doing wrong? But we don't want to have to have that conversation because we, I had a wife that told me yesterday, I promise you, and I wish I would have printed it up. Her words to me was, 
I'm a good wife. Her words was, I'm a good wife. I ain't never cheated on my husband. And I just want you to understand that it's a lot more that come along with being a good wife than keeping your legs close to another man. Because you can keep your legs close to another man, but you can open your mouth and tear him down. You are not a good wife. And a lot of times we put everything on faithfulness. The faithfulness is this great equalizer with us. And we don't understand that faithfulness is only one component to being a wife. And when it all boiled down to it, what she ended up having to tell me was, I made my husband pick me over his outside child that he created. And now, now I have to watch my husband be depressed every day. Because I made him choose me over his child that he know exists in the world. But I'm a good wife. Well, you're not a good person. Because a good person knows the importance of a child having their father in their lives. And a good person would never make their husband neglect their child. So you could be faithful. And in your opinion, you could be a good wife, but you're not a good person. And the end result is you got to watch your husband go through depression. Mm -hmm. Oh, it gets deep. See, when you get off into this sex coaching... And relationship coaching, it gets serious. It gets deep. And you wondering why certain things are showing up in your marriage? You can't make people make them kind of choices. If you're going to accept his cheating ass and the end result of the cheating was a baby, then you got to accept that baby too. And that's the truth. And if you can't, then let it all go. But a lot of women not going to let it all go. They just going to tell you, pay for the baby, but I don't want to see the baby and the baby can't come here. And we're going to act like the baby don't exist on the other side of town. Not understanding that you tearing this person down on the inside because a piece of them is somewhere else. So the end result is you got to watch him be depressed. So now that's just your depressed ass husband. That you don't ever see smile. That you can't ever seem to make happen no more. Because it almost feel like he done sold his soul to make you happy. And the truth is, because this outside child exists and you don't accept this child, you're not going to be happy. Because this outside child exists and he can't have contact with this child, he not going to be happy. So y'all just signed up for a whole lot of unhappiness. Yes. I want to say that's Miss Collins. If you can't deal with it, it's better to let it go. It is. If you know you can't deal with it in the right way. I, we, I don't. And a lot of times women say, oh, she's trying to teach women to be stupid. No, I'm not trying to teach women to be stupid, but I'm trying to teach you to be human. I'm trying to teach you to have compassion. I'm trying to teach you to care about somebody other than yourself. Yeah. And and we've watched older women that came before us that, that understood that these outside children needed their daddy too. The same way her children needed their daddy. And she didn't like what happened. But at the same time, she didn't, she didn't deny these children or their father. That's some hateful, hurtful shit. But we've we've come to that. We that's where we are today as a people. So we don't care about nothing but ourselves and our own feelings. And uh we don't want to be out here in these streets looking stupid. But you in your home unhappy. All right. So today's lesson. Men hate emotional turmoil. And if you can suck his dick, you can submit and serve. So those are the things that you should take with you today. I hope you enjoyed Sex Talk with Sharonda. The email address, I'm sorry, not the email address. The website is below. My Instagram is below. And if you enjoyed today's lesson, feel free to send a tip. The Cash App is there as well. 
You all be blessed. You all be safe. You all be warm. The PPG store opens today at 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, I thought um, our new masks were going to come in. So I ordered a whole bunch of masks. And the masks are face coverings. But they have the hole around the mouth for you to be able to suck dick. Mm -hmm. So yes, we having steak and blowjob day this year, COVID style. And I thought the mask... Um, I thought the masks were going to be in so I could show them to you. And another thing that I have this year for Steak and Blowjob Day, which is March 14th, by the way, is the door hangers that says, um, I want to say it says, do not disturb blowjob in progress or something like that. I can't remember, but it's like a do not disturb. And it's letting people know that, you know, like, I think it's going to be real cute. Like, if you get, like, a lot of Amazon deliveries and all of that kind of stuff, I'm going to hang mine on the outside of my door. So, when all of my um, people come to drop off my packages, they can get them a good laugh because I'm all about the jokes. But it's going to be, like, blowjob in progress or something like that. But, yeah, it's real, real cute door hangers. Um, and, of course... Last year, I did the blowjob bibs. The whole thing was no child left behind. So that was last year's theme, okay? This year theme is um, is a COVID theme. So we're we doing blowjobs COVID style. So that's why we have the mask with the holes in them to be able to suck dick and all of this kind of stuff. So uh, put what on the shirt, Kayata? What I need to put on the shirt? Girl, tell me what I need to put on the shirt. <laughs> if you can suck dick, then you can submit and serve. Suck dick and submit. All right, I got you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Suck dick and submit. All right. You all be blessed. You all be safe. You all be... Be warm. Make sure you say a prayer for everybody because I know everyone does not have their electricity restored. Texas is having a hard time. Keep everybody in prayer. And, you know, when I do these lessons, and I'm going to end this, but when I do these lessons, y'all, my goal is just to help us to become better women. Seriously. To understand that there's nothing wrong with being a feminine woman. When I was reading one of the messages, like when you're talking to your man, he wants to feel like he's talking to a woman and not one of his homeboys. So when you're talking to him and you're like, yeah, so you know what I'm saying? And I need you to keep it real with me. And I need you to keep it 100 and all of this kind of stuff. Understand that when you're talking to him like that, you're not being his feminine asset. You, he looking at you like you the homeboy. Okay? You need to be the lady, the classy lady that he's dealing with. Because when you represent yourself as a woman with class, he's going to treat you as a woman with class. And I know, you know, some people love their hood shit. And, you know, I, I get it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just feel like we're supposed to be elevating and we're supposed to be stepping it up. And, we, you know, we're supposed to be doing things differently because we want different results. And in order for us to get different results, we got to do things differently. Okay? So you all be blessed. You all be safe. You all be warm. And I'll talk to y'all later.